Hi, it's Rachel with Just In Case You, and today we're talking about just in case you become a leader. What's the best way to hone your leadership skills is to emulate those of other great leaders. And today we're talking to Connie Cooper Shepard, who has been a senior VP at several Fortune 500 companies, including Procter & Gamble, Kellogg's, Hershey's, and Starbucks, and has managed hundreds of people. Uh, in each of those organizations and rose the ranks swiftly. So today, Connie's gonna give you her insight on what it takes to be a great leader. Connie, throughout your career, what type of leadership positions did you have? Um, well, uh, my first leadership position, I was a unit manager. I had seven men reporting to me. Um, five were my same level, two were, no, were level below. Um, six were over 45 years old, and I think I was 28. So I truly had to learn to lead versus manage or tell. And the way that I did that was really think about them first and what was important to them in the position and how could I help them. So I really developed the foundation of my leadership style, which is servant leadership. Tell me what you mean by that. Servant leadership is basically uh, the leader exists to serve those um, in the organization. So a leader does three things. One, envisions the future. So they direction set, which way are we going? They enable the organization, which really is about breaking barriers and aligning resources. And lastly, they empower individuals to reach their full potential, ensuring the right people are in the right positions and they get the right tools and training that they need to be successful. So the three characteristics that you talked about, um, do you think one's more important than the other? Or is it like a three-legged stool where if you're missing one, yeah, no, I think all three are critical because um, Envision really talks about the business, uh, Enable really talks about the organization, and Empower really talks about the individual. And you need to have all of those elements in leadership. Can you give me an example? You said that you um, looked at talking about with a group of seven men that were reporting to you in your first unit manager position. What made them tick and what really inspired them? Give me an example of how you were able to do that or how do you uncover that? Right, so. Somebody's motivations. Yeah, um, I always ask three questions when um, I start working with someone. The first one is what motivates you? Because believe it or not, different people are motivated by different things, whether some might be money, others recognition, someone else might want to learn a skill. The other question is what do you want out of this job? Um, some people want to master a job. Some people want to be promoted. And then the last question is, how can I help you? So what motivates you? What do you want out of this particular job? And how can I help you? What that has done, and, and I had a leader teach me that, um, is it really sets the foundation of you're in it for them. And you want to enable them and help them uh, do their job. And that's why, as a leader, you're committed to not only driving the business, but helping the individual. How do you keep the continuity when you're a leader? You know, it's one thing to say that you're going to be there to support them. It's another thing to do and actually, you know, walk the walk. Um, how do you keep that continuity when you're managing over time? Um, well, it's important to have that principle, uh, principle-based leadership. And so what I mean by principle-based leadership is um, as a leader, you have certain principles that guide your behavior. You know, one of um, my principles that came from Stephen Covey is seek first to understand, then be understood. Another is be proactive. Another is begin with the end in mind. So if you have these guiding principles um, and you have a particular style of leadership like servant leadership and you have integrity, those, those key elements are who you are and how you go about business. It should be very consistent. Um, how do you know if you're a good leader? Well, um, I don't know if you can ever reach the end state of being a good, better, best leader, but what, um, what someone said to me once, I really felt like was a huge accomplishment and achievement and was an indicator that I was probably doing the right things. And that was, um, the individual came to me and he said, you knew I could do it and I didn't even know. And to me, that's what leadership is about. Believing in someone else, understanding their skills, and matching that with the right position so that they rise to levels they didn't even know they could achieve. Agreed. 
what do you think from a leadership standpoint if you had to whittle it down to just a couple adjectives or one trait that somebody has for being a great leader yeah um, I would you can't be a good leader unless you have the foundation of integrity and trust I think uh, the great leaders are distinguished from good leaders because their organization and the people um, they're working with trust them and they trust them that they're going to do the right thing for them and the right thing for the bus their business so I would say it definitely integrity and trust has to be the foundation um, I also think an element of energy commitment and then expertise as far as characteristics go um, so those would be kind of your four cornerstones um, of leadership that are critical it's no wonder why Connie rose the rank so swiftly. She practices what she preaches and the whole mantra of walk in the walk, she's a living example. Anyway, this is a great way to get started on how to become a great leader. And until next time, it's Rachel with Just In Case You.